Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today I thought that I would talk through some of the ways that I feel my style has kind of changed and shifted, evolved in 2021. Um, I've said this so many times throughout the last 12 months but our style is so transient and it's very much centered around a very particular point in time, what our lifestyle is like, what we're going through, where we're living um, and yeah I've definitely sort of noticed a few shifts which for me have been more an exploration of uh, different silhouettes uh, that I've really wanted to play around with um, and it also kind of extends a little bit to makeup and also jewelry so I sort of thought I would talk about all of that in this video I have done one of these previously um, it was in paid partnership with uh, Schwarzkopf I think um, so I might link that one up in the cards if you'd like to go and have a watch of that because I believe I filmed that probably around a year ago um, but I thought I would start by finishing my makeup so you can see I've already got my eye makeup on and I generally tend to start with eye makeup because I figure it's sort of the one part of my routine that has the biggest impact on the way that I look. Um, and when it comes to putting any sort of coverage or concealer on the rest of my face, I tend to go very, very light. So I've been using this here from Laura Mercier. This is the Tinted Moisturizer Oil Free. And I just like to use this in the areas where I need coverage. So it's usually underneath my eyes um, and I know this is really a tinted moisturizer but I will use it like a concealer um, and then also just here and down here as well where I get redness because I have dermatitis. So I you know you can just rub this in with your fingers uh, sometimes I will use a brush sort of depends but I might just finish working that in and then I'll be back. <laughs> I think this is quite a subtle change but I've really just been focusing on the areas of my complexion that need a little bit of help. So it's just where I've got a little bit of darkness or a little bit of redness. I'm trying to leave the rest of my skin or my complexion completely free of makeup and uh, this sort of feels like a return to what I used to do when I was younger. Um, before I moved to Sydney I actually had never used foundation before ever. Uh, so I was 24, 25? 24 or 25 when I use my first foundation which I think is probably quite unusual to many of you um, and it's because I've always been very fortunate to have incredibly good skin and I sort of championed that. Obviously the good fortune of that is not lost on me. Um, I've also noticed a real return back to cream products so when it comes to bronzer I'm just using this one here from Fenty. Um, I really like the way this looks on my skin it's just so natural adds a bit of glow and I'm just going to put that on my cheeks and then a little bit on my nose. Not really anywhere else. I sort of just feel a little bit too done up when I put it on the rest of my face. So that just gives me a little bit of extra colour. Okay. Um, oh, and I might just put on a little lippy because I have really narrow lips. Um, I actually had an accident when I was younger and I tripped trying to walk my bicycle down the steps. Well, actually, yeah, walking my bicycle down the steps when I used to ride it. Mum told me that I'd fall over if I rode my bike down the steps, so I took her advice and I tripped over the pedal. I cut my lip open and I had to get stitches in my lip. Um, and I've always been very self-conscious of it ever since because I have this gap when I smile. If you ever wonder why I feel so awkward smiling, that's the reason. Um, so, just going to pop this on from Bobbi Brown. It's the Crushed Lip Colour in Cezanne Nude. And I like this because actually it's sort of, I don't know, it makes my lips look bigger. And I find that it gives my lip colour a little bit more warmth because it is quite cool tone. Okay, um, now I want to talk a little bit about jewellery. So uh, I've really noticed a shift away from fine jewellery. Um, even with this necklace that I'm wearing right now. This one is from Monica Veneta and it's part of the... It was part of the Doina collection. I've kind of found that I want to make a little bit more of a statement or have a bit more emphasis on my adornments, on the jewellery that I'm wearing. And I think that part of this has to do with the fact that I tend to wear quite minimal outfits or ones that are comprised mostly of basics. So this is a way for me to make it feel a little bit more exciting. So you've probably seen this really thick chain necklace which I bought from Country Road. Wouldn't necessarily recommend this one because I find it sometimes comes undone, the clasp, it's not the most secure, but in terms of the weight of it and everything it's been a really nice little addition to have around my neck. I also really like this one here which is from Edge of Ember and this one's a little bit more interesting because it is both a chain and then it has the pearls too and I like to wear it half and half because I think that uh, creates a little bit more 
contrast and you're like, ooh, what's, what's going on around her neck? Um, and then also with earrings. So I'm wearing these hoops here today, which are from Ebb and Ive, and I've got a few different kind of iterations of this, but so maybe I'll take it off so you can see. But it's essentially this slightly unnaturally shaped curve and it's a bit more chunky than my other earrings. Um, it just helps to balance things out a little bit, I find. And quite often you'll see me also wearing these ones that I have from Timeless Pearly, um, which the other earring has pearl a pearl drop to it. Okay, um, makeup on, my jewelry's on, let's talk about clothes. So we might move into the other room so I can talk you through that. Okay, so I think the biggest thing that I've really noticed over the last year when it comes to the clothing that I've been wearing has been that I've shifted away from purely kind of monochromatic and very basic color palettes to actually introducing more color. So I started out with earthy neutrals, which for me felt like a really natural progression and definitely something that I would recommend doing if you're trying to introduce color but you feel very lost and don't know where to start. So I'm just going to pull a few items out of my closet just to give you an idea of color. So we have this little tank here from Lois Hazel, which is a really lovely um, kind of a light tan color with a bit of a flake to it. We also have this warmer top, which is from Uniqlo in this really lovely kind of teddy bear brown. And then we also have this top here from Mal, which is in a khaki green linen. So that's kind of the first place that I found myself really starting when it came to adding in colors. But I found that as I started to do that, I felt more comfortable with the idea of branching out. And this has been really exciting for me because for many years I've had this sort of mission or this aim, a goal to introduce more color into my closet because um, I think Sometimes it can get a little bit boring just wearing black, white, and gray all the time. Um, I'm sure I'm not alone in feeling that. Ironically though, of course I am wearing all black today as I say that, but um, it has been fun introducing some options. And from there, just gonna pull a few more things out. I've started to find myself shifting towards soft pastels or kind of muted colors. So we have this top here from a piece of heart, which I scoured the internet for many years before finally tracking down in my size. And then also I have this really beautiful kind of pale blue dress from Summer and Storm as well, which is a really fun silhouette because it's got the puppy sleeves. So that's kind of been, I think, probably the biggest shift for me has been introducing more color and being really excited about it and wearing a lot of neutrals. The second thing that I've noticed in terms of the way that my style has changed is that I've started to focus a lot less on what are considered essentials for your closet. Just because an item is right for someone else doesn't mean that it is right for you, your lifestyle, your personal style, or your closet. So I know there are so many lists out there that say that these are the essential things to have in your wardrobe. And it's really part of the reason why I sort of steered clear of doing that type of content anymore because I don't want you to feel like you need to have something in your wardrobe even though it's not really you. So I've been focusing less on things that I feel I need to have and instead really leaning into the items that make me feel excited and the styles I feel most comfortable in. And that's been a real game changer and it's kind of bizarre that it's taken me so long to actually get to this point. But uh, I think especially when you are building up your closet in the first place, you really, you really rely on those lists and those basics, essentials that you should have as a good starting point and a guide. So for those of you who are in that phase of your wardrobe and you're, or you're rebuilding, then please learn from my own mistake because it will save you a lot of money. And next, next thing that I've noticed about my style shifting has been a transition from really kind of peg leg or tapered silhouettes when it comes to trousers Things are a bit more straighter and even styles that are longer through the leg as well. And that to me is really exciting because it's a new silhouette, a new kind of option or new style to play with in my closet when it comes to building outfits uh, and I've really enjoyed it. So I've mentioned these trousers so many times but these have really kind of been the catalyst for all of that for me, I feel. They're the H&M trousers which are very straight through the leg and I did get mine tailored so that they were cropped above the ankle. Um, I just sort of find a lot with this 
this very particular silhouette that it works best for me um, but I do like when they're a bit longer and you're wearing them with heels um, there's time and a place right um, one of the other pairs which again I think was a real part of this whole journey for me with that changing leg leg shape has been these leather trousers from Everlane which I've shared with you a few times and maybe put a photo of them on on screen but I absolutely love these and again they have that very very similar silhouette where they're high waisted and they're very straight through the legs so you have a lot of movement and uh, I've been finding those sorts of things very comfortable to wear as well even when I am you know playing around with my son and actually on that note it has also translated through to jeans as well so I'm wearing less skinny jeans they're still a huge part of my wardrobe don't get me wrong I still love a good skinny jean but I am finding that I like a straighter leg style a little bit more or something that has a bit more ease and give through the leg I've just got a couple more that I wanted to mention that I've really noticed so next has been a real return to blazers and if any of you read my blog back when I lived in Wellington then you probably will recall that I wore a blazer with basically every Every single outfit it's a huge part of my style uniform and sort of I'd say shortly after we moved here to Sydney maybe it was when I started working um, at Discovery I found that I was relying on my blazers less and less it was a much more casual environment and uh, I sort of steered away from wearing them so much and I started wearing knitwear and kind of chunky knits and things like that a little bit more um, but in the past year I've sort of returned to the blazer I feel like it is kind of the ideal third piece. Um, you've probably heard of the golden rule, the rule of thirds, um, it's something I've, I've mentioned before and yet sometimes a blazer or a jacket or something like that is sort of the item that you need to add to your outfit to create balance. Um, so I've got two here. One is from our kit. This one's in a navy. Um, I really like their blazers by the way. I think they're very good value for money. And this one's a little bit more boxy and oversized. And then at the extreme end of the spectrum is this one here from Tibby. Um, which is very, very oversized, but it does have this button over detail so that you can sort of cinch it in uh, and create this wrapped effect so it almost looks like a top um, almost I suppose the cinched effect you get if you're belting a blazer at the waist okay so the next thing has to do a little bit more with balance and how I put together my outfits so previously I used to use a lot of those um, very standard styling tricks many of which I've shared before and I still often talk about them but I've noticed myself moving away from them and this is definitely something that has been a major postpartum moment of realization for me is that a lot of them just didn't work the way that they used to before I had a baby and that's just because my body's changed slightly so I found myself relying on other ways to balance out my outfits and with this I've been thinking about like how I'm tying up my hair what parts of my body are exposed uh, and also the ways in which I put color on it together in my outfit to create columns of color or blocks of color um, but not only that I've been thinking a bit more about the shoes that I wear too. Um, generally, I would just wear the same shoes over and over again. I have my favorites and I love them and that's that. But um, one thing I did definitely buy into that is a trend this year is the chunky shoe trend, chunky loafer, chunky boot. I figured for me, if there was one trend that I was going to add to my wardrobe, which felt like it could add something, this was it. So I got these little loafers from Todd's. Sorry, my camera just got a little bit too hot, but just continuing saying that um, I part purchased these for the voucher and part with my own money. But yeah, I love kind of what they do to an outfit uh, and they're a great way to add a slightly more interesting or visually interesting element to what I'm wearing, especially with this chunky chain across the foot. I also have my boots with the kind of chunky tread sole or lug sole from Port and Pair, which I really love. I'll put a photo up of those up on screen. But yeah, that's, that's something else that I've really noticed with my personal style and how it's kind of been evolving throughout 2021. Oh, and two other things I just realized before I wrap things up. One is kind of been a shift towards the mini bag and this has definitely been spurred on by, I'd say, just the unfolding events over the past kind of six months. It's been really that I haven't needed to carry too much when I'm going out and about. I just really need my wallet, um, my phone, keys, and that's about it. I will hand sanitize it mask but you know very very little so um, I've been enjoying using bags like this which just sit across the body really nicely and also again this has been a really nice way that I've been able to inject a little bit of color into my outfits 
when I am wearing a very very basic color palette so when I'm wearing black I'm finding that I'm more inclined to wear a bag that has a bit more pop a bit more oomph to it so something like this or my Poland number eight bag which I love so that's been another one and the other thing has been a real shift towards longer dresses I actually love burying my legs in the summertime but I'm finding that when it comes to dresses I like those longer more modest silhouettes so oh. That dress I showed you before from Summer and Storm is a really good example, but also this one here from Serious Life is really, really long. I wore this when we went to Bangalore at the start of the year, um, but it's just really floaty and I'm enjoying that active movement in my outfits too. I like the fact that my clothing has a little bit more personality and it does have that flow and movement and drape and those are the things that are really exciting me about fashion and clothing at the moment. I'm going to wrap things up here because I've definitely kept you for too long already but I hope that you've enjoyed getting this little bit of insight into how I feel my style has changed over the past kind of 12 or so months. Um, I definitely think that living with the pandemic that has had a real impact on how many of us have been dressing especially as we lean into those more relaxed silhouettes um, and that's I mean you could probably see that reflected in a lot of the items that I was talking about from a clothing perspective and also just in that very pared back way that I've been applying makeup because um, I think that's also re uh, reflective of it too. But yeah that's it from me today. Um, thank you so much for watching for spending some of your day with me and I will see you next time with a brand new video. See you soon. Bye!